Assalamualaikum. Uh, welcome. You're watching the News at Six with me, Ishan Russell. The News at Six is all about the day's biggest developing stories, and we'll be filling in on them over the next half hour. But first, the headlines that we're tracking right now. After over a month-long election process, counting of votes to be held for four states and one union territory tomorrow. Cyclone alert in parts of Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh and West Bengal, where the department predicts heavy rainfall for the next 24 hours. Twenty-one member reconstituted Public Accounts Committee meets a BGP demand that Augusta Westland VVIP chopper deal issue should be taken up. And 14 years after the Godhra train burning case, main suspect Farooq Mohammad Bahana arrested on his way to Godhra from Mumbai. Our top story this evening, counting of votes in the high stakes assembly elections in West Bengal, Tamil Nadu, Assam and Kerala and Puducherry will start on Thursday morning. The Election Commission has made all preparations for the smooth conduct of the process. Exit polls have, however, predicted a change of government in at least four of the assemblies, with the fifth of West Bengal being tipped to be retained by the TMC. D-Day for four states and a union territory that saw a one-month poll process. Votes will be counted in West Bengal, Tamil Nadu, Assam, Kerala and Puducherry from 8 a.m. on Thursday. This will be half an hour after postal ballots are counted. Clear trends will be available by 11 a.m., while a final picture can be expected by 12 noon. According to the Election Commission, the counting will end by 3 p.m. The process involves a ballot unit being switched on in the presence of senior election officials and counting agents. The result command is then keyed in to get results per machine. Once results are declared, names of the winning candidates will find mention in the Gazette. The Gazette notification will initiate the process to form the next legislative assemblies in the states. So far, exit polls that were shown on television channels on 16th of May show that Assam, Tamil Nadu and Kerala have voted for a change. They are predicting that the BJP will get its first government in Assam, dislodging the Congress. The Congress is expected to lose Kerala, while the DMK has been tipped to regain power by unseating the AIA DMK. According to the exit polls, only West Bengal is expected to buck the trend by re-electing the Trinamool Congress led by Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee. The Congress has been given a chance in the tiny union territory of Puducherry, where it is likely to get power in alliance with the DMK. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Now, speculation about a cabinet reshuffle gained uh, ground ahead of the counting of the results of the five assemblies. Media reports state that if the BGP manages to win in Assam, then uh, current sports minister Sarbananda Sonawal would have to become chief minister. His big vacant birth will have to val then validate the need for a reshuffle. The reports also mentioned that Modi government could drop some ministers, including Health Minister J.P. Nadda, Environment Minister Prakash Javrekar, and Minister of State in Micro and Small and Medium Enterprises Giri Raj Singh. The ministers could be drafted for party work. Now, the 21-member reconstituted Public Accounts Committee met today. The BGP demanded that the P uh, Public Accounts Panel take up the contentious Augusta Westland VVIV chopper deal. Uh, meanwhile, the TMC expressed concerns on examination of defence deals by CAG Shashikant Sharma. Comptroller and Auditor General Shashi Kant Sharma on Wednesday made a customary briefing in the first meeting of the reconstituted Public Accounts Committee. A BJP MP demanded that the PSC must examine the CAG report on Augusta Westland that was submitted in 2013. The BJP's demand was backed by a BJD member who cited the coal scam as a precedent to examine issues under investigation by agencies. I told the committee members this particular issue came in 2013 when uh, uh, Professor Joshi was the chairman of the PSC. So he has gone through that, but they did not take that subject at that time. And after that, there is no further development. And any issue which is before the court of law or before investigation, usually we don't take. 
A TMC member noted that the CAG is examining a number of issues, including defence purchases made in the past. He added that since Sharma had served as defence secretary, there could be questions about conflict of interest. The Supreme Court itself in that, that particular issue, so nothing to discuss on that, because that is one of the highest judicial forum in the country. I feel too much is given by the media. Demands to examine the growing NPAs of the banks and efficacy of the PPP model were also raised. The reconstituted PSC has a term of one year starting from 1st of May this year to 30th of April 2017. The 21-member panel has 7 members from the Rajya Sabha and 15 from the Lok Sabha. This is Kriti Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Now, after being on the run for 14 years, the main conspirator of the Godhra train burning case of 2002 was arrested by the Gujarat ATS. Farooq Mohammed Bahana was detained near Kalol town of Panchmahal district where he headed from Mumbai. According to officials, Bahana moved to Mumbai and became a property broker there. Officials also alleged that Bahana supplied the petrol that was used in burning the Sabarmati train. 59 people were burnt alive when a coach of the Sabarmati Express was torched on the 27th of February 2002. The incident triggered large-scale riots in the state, which uh, led to the killing of hundreds of people. Now, the Indian Med Department on Wednesday issued a cyclone alert in parts of Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh and West Bengal. The Weather Department has said heavy rainfall will continue in Tamil Nadu, coastal Andhra Pradesh and Puducherry during the next 24 hours. Meanwhile, the Tamil Nadu government is taking all precautionary measures to deal with the situation. With parts of Tamil Nadu receiving heavy rains for the third day in a row, the Med Department said the deep depression in the Bay of Bengal is expected to intensify into a cyclonic storm in the next 48 hours. A cyclone warning was also issued for southern parts of Andhra Pradesh and West Bengal. Heavy to very heavy rainfall is also expected over north coastal Tamil Nadu and Puducherry in the next 24 hours. We are getting good rainfall over the entire Tamil Nadu last two days. Now this is due to the depression which was lying over the east of Tamil Nadu, Chennai, 70 kilometers today morning in the west central, uh, southwest bay. It has moved north, northwestward and intensified into deep depression. Now it is expected to move away from the Tamil Nadu. It will move away from the Tamil Nadu and moving away in north, northeast direction. It will get intensified and as a cyclone and move all along the coast of Andhra Pradesh and Orissa coast. In Chennai, sewage lines started overflowing in many areas due to rain caused by cyclonic winds. The Tamil Nadu government kept 25 boats on standby for rescue operations. Four National Disaster Response Force teams have also been deployed. Tamil Nadu government also deputed senior officers to areas that may experience heavy rainfall to oversee precautionary measures. It had set up a call centre with 1070 number to receive rainfall-related grievances. Fishermen have been warned against going to the sea. Kadalai aram, kadalai aram pola, rumbo kadhi kadal sorpar ke. Anale angle tholli sey mulla, rumbo kashmar ke. Moon naal naala, na mara udale pinge nerge. Na pandren teriya do bolle yar ke. Kadalai thi chellam mulla angalala. Kadu aur sorpar ke, boat veliya ho mulla angalala. Heavy rains that led to floods in November last year killed nearly 350 people in Tamil Nadu. Akhilesh Suman's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Now the mercury continues to soar in northern India, including Himachal Pradesh, uh, making life difficult for people there. The region is reeling under an intense heat wave over the last few weeks. The country's hottest months are May and June, but the north has been seeing temperatures in excess of 40 degrees Celsius since April. Areas in the state are experiencing day temperatures at least 4 to 5 degrees Celsius above normal. Most parts of Gujarat also continue to reel under hot weather conditions, with mercury levels in many cities hovering between 42 and 45 degrees Celsius during the day. Abhi Madhya Pradesh ke jo nichle ilake hain, jisme district Una, Bilaspur, Hamirpur, aur district Sirmor ka jo nichla ilaka hai, yahan pe jo tapmana we har side mein jaare hain, 40 degree se jo tapman upar chal rahe hain, sabse jada jo tapman aaj Una mein record kiya gaya, 42 degree record kiya gaya, jo ke 4 degree samanne se jada hai. Urban Development Minister Venkaiya Naidu today turned down demands to rename Akbar Road in Lutins Delhi, saying renaming streets was not on his agenda. This comes after Union Minister General V. K. Singh wrote to Urban Development Ministry seeking the road to be named after Maharana Pradap. 
While uh, Singh received support from within the party, the New Delhi Municipal Corporation confirmed it had not received any name proposal, uh, any name changing proposal. Last year, the Delhi government renamed Aurangzeb Road in the Lutyens Bangalore zone after former president, late APJ Abdul Kalam, after a push by BJP leaders. The opposition criticized the BJP over the demand. Akbar or Ashok, देश में दो ऐसे शासक रहे हैं जिनके नाम से पहले ग्रेट लगा हुआ है। अकबर दीन इलाही के जरिए एक सेकुलर मुस्लिम शासक के रूप में प्रसिद्ध रहे हैं। इसलिए उन पर उंगली उठाना गलत है। श्री वीके सिंह जातीय विद्वेष में भरे हुए हैं। The Vikas Singh have any idea either of history or India or Indian ethos or Indian culture? They are all servants of the Rashtriya Swayamsevak Sangh and its organisations. These kind of demands are completely unnecessary, useless, and should be rejected forthwith. Now the centre is working on a new legislation to replace the existing Consumer Protection Act. The new law will have penal provisions of 50 lakh rupees and five year imprisonment for celebrities promoting sale of items without verifying the quality. Union Minister Ambilas Paswan said that the con uh, proposed Consumer Protection Bill 2016 has already been approved by the Parliamentary Standing Committee and would be introduced in Parliament in the next session. In the new legislation, penalty for indulging in a deceiving ad would be enhanced to 50 lakh rupees from 10 lakh rupees at present and the jail term to five years from the current two years. Paswan said the new legislation would have elaborate scope for a consumer to lodge complaints against a substandard product sitting at home and it would be also enhance the monetary limits of district and state level consumer redressal courts. जो standing committee के या स्थाई समिति के सदस्य हैं, वो mini parliament है। इन लोगों का कहना है कि 50 लाख रुपया उसको जुर्माना कीजिए और पांच साल तक का जेल का सजा तय करते हैं कीजिए। अभी जो हमने बैठक बुलाया था, तो अब department उसमें बैठ करके जाएगा, फिर उसमें cabinet फैसला लेगा। Some more national news stories now nationwide. The centre is mulling an ordinance to defer implementation of the Supreme Court ordered national eligibility come entrance to test at NEET by one year. However, no final decision has yet been taken. Ten people were killed in landslides in Karim Ganj and Halia Kanti districts in Barak Valley in Assam. They include five members of a family who were killed in a landslide in Atsonachira in Karim Ganj district. Forest officials in Jammu and Kashmir and Uttarakhand struggled to douse massive forest fires on Wednesday. Fresh fires also broke out in Uttarkashi district. IAF helicopters fetched waters from lakes in Nainital using bamboo buckets and poured it on areas inaccessible to firefighters. The mortal remains of Nirankari head Baba Hardev Singh were cremated at Nigam Bodh Ghat today. Thousands of devotees attended the funeral procession. His family and Nirankari leaders were present at the Ghat when the body was consigned to the flames. He died in a road accident in Canada on Friday. Time for a short break. Lots more on the other side. Do stay tuned. The splendid, grand and massive new Buddhist copper dome of the Rashtrapati Bhavan. It gets its influence from stupa at Sanchi. The dome is more than twice the height of the rest of the building. The reinforced concrete shell of the outer dome began to be formed during the beginning of 1929. The last stone of the dome was laid on April 6, 1929. Five keenly fought battles. Five eagerly awaited results. All the incisive analysis. Word in 2016 on Rajasabha TV. Entire point of difference. Elections will prove that. It is that factor which you see. Head up the government, won by Miss Jai. Communist Party and Congress are coming one after one. It will be fought. 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 It
coverage of the election tally. Voters will cast their vote and decide the fate. Watch it live on Counting Day, May 19th, only on Rajya Sabha Television. The sacred relics of Buddha were unearthed in Piprava in Uttar Pradesh. Buddha. Buddhist monks from all over the world visit the National Museum to pay their respects. These charred bone fragments of Buddha are housed in the gold canopy gifted by the royal family of Thailand. Welcome back. You're watching the News at 6. Now, India today successfully test-fired its indigenously developed nuclear-capable Prithvi-2 missile. The short-range surface-to-surface missile was tested from Chandipur in Odisha. The medium-range missile can carry 500 kilograms to 1,000 kilograms of warhead and is powered by liquid propulsion twin engines. It has a strike range of 350 kilometers. Prithvi is India's first indigenously built ballistic missile. The last user trial of Prithvi-2 was successfully conducted on February 16th this year. Now, Apple Inc.'s CEO, Tim Cook, started off his maiden five-day visit to India with a visit to the famous Siddhi Vinayak Temple in central Mumbai today. Cook was accompanied by Sanjay Kaul, the head of country operations for Apple, that witnessed its first quarter dip, a quarter of dip in sales of its flagship iPhone. Cook is slated to meet top Indian industrialists later today, including Tata Sons chairman Saras Mistri, TCS chief executive N. Chandrasekharan, Vodafone India head Sunil Sood and some startup entrepreneurs before flying off to Hyderabad for engagements on Thursday. He's also expected to meet Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Saturday before winding up his visit. Now, China today denied blocking India's bid for a membership in the elite nuclear suppliers group. It claimed that it will work with the members of the 48-nation grouping and advised India to find a solution for uh, India's entry into the group. Now, China's Vice Minister for Foreign Affairs said the issue needs to be deliberated among relevant parties. Earlier this week, China claimed that several members of the group shared its view that signing of the no Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, or the NPT, was an important standard for NSG's expansion. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson uh, Liu Kang in Beijing said that uh, not only China but a lot of other NSG members are of the view that the NPT is the cornerstone for safeguarding the international nuclear non-proliferation regime. The Chinese action is apparently at the behest of Pakistan, which is also seeking an entry into the bloc. India is not a party to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, uh, the international pact aimed at preventing the spread of nuclear weapons, maintaining that it was discriminatory. Now, news on the U.S. presidential race and Democratic frontrunner Hillary Clinton eked out a narrow win in the Kentucky primary over Bernie Sanders, who kept his underdog campaign alive with a decisive win in Oregon. On the Republican side, though, Donald Trump moved closer to being declared the party nominee. The U.S. Republican race may have just Donald Trump as the last man standing, but the Democratic race is very much alive with Bernie Sanders claiming that he is in until the last ballot is cast. On Wednesday, Sanders supporters handed him a win in the Oregon primary, adding to his run of late victories over Democratic frontrunner Hillary Clinton. Clinton declared a victory in the Kentucky primary, but the race was too close to call. That there are a lot of people out there, many of the pundits and politicians, they say, Bernie Sanders should drop out. Well, let me be as clear as I can be. I agree with you. We are in to the last ballot is cast. However, despite her loss in Oregon, Clinton remains on the path to secure her party's nomination. Apart from her pledged delegate lead of 280, she has an overwhelming advantage among superdelegates. She's only around 100 short of the magic number of 2,383 delegates needed to win the nomination. Despite the rancor between the two Democratic rivals ahead of the National Convention in Philadelphia this July, Clinton is gearing up to facing Trump and the general election contest. Ask yourself, if you have a President of the United States who has put 
at the center of his campaign, his rhetoric about Muslims, how much more difficult will something like that become? How do we put together a coalition to take out ISIS when members of that coalition are majority Muslim nations? So what Trump says about foreign policy is not just offensive, it's dangerous. Meanwhile, Trump won Oregon's Republican primary, the next step on his now seemingly unstoppable journey towards the GOP nomination. With a win, he got 70 delegates out of the 1,237 he needs to formally claim the nomination. The next round of eight primaries are slated for 7th of June and Washington, D.C. will host the last primary on 14th of June. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. The Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump claims he is open to the idea of holding nuclear talks with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. In an interview, Trump said he was willing to meet the North Korean leader to discuss its nuclear program. Such a meeting would mark a significant change of U.S. policy towards the politically isolated regime. At the moment, while senior officials in U.S. President Barack Obama's administration are in touch with their counterparts in North Korea, there is no contact at the presidential level. No serving U.S. president has ever met with a North Korean leader. North Korea held nuclear tests in 2006, 2009, 2013 and 2016, leading to a series of sanctions by the United Nations. Meanwhile, Democratic frontrunner Hillary Clinton decried Trump's comments, saying his foreign policy made no sense. And you're going to look back and you're going At least 77 people were killed and more than 140 wounded by three bombings in Baghdad on Tuesday, extending the deadliest spate of attacks in the Iraqi capital so far this year and driving Shiite fighters into the streets to defend some areas. It's the latest in a, a deadly militant attacks far from the front lines in the country's north and west where Iraqi forces are battling the Islamic State. The aftermath of bloody violence in Baghdad. More than 70 people have been killed and over 140 wounded in a day of attacks on Tuesday. A car bomb went off in Shiite southern city and another vehicle was blown up in the mixed Shiite Sunni neighborhood of al-Rashid, south of the capital. The Islamic State militant group said it was responsible for a suicide bombing in a marketplace in the northern, mainly Shiite Muslim district of al Shab. The security official in charge of the area was later arrested on the orders of Iraq's prime minister. The U.S. administration, an ally of the Iraqi government, strongly condemned the latest string of attacks by Islamic State, saying it is specifically targeting the civilians. Strongly condemns the barbaric terrorist attacks in Iraq today by ISIL that specifically targeted innocent civilians. We extend our deepest condolences to the victims and their families. The string of attacks by ISIL is the latest reminder of the danger that this group poses to all Iraqis and the importance of Iraqi leaders from all communities working together against a common enemy. Security has improved in Baghdad in the recent years, but these attacks and recent assaults have left many residents wondering whether the government can keep them safe from an enemy that shows no sign of backing down. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Let's get you some more international news now and global buzz. At least 35 people were killed and over 150 are still missing in landslides and mudslides in Sri Lanka. 19 more bodies were recovered. After three days of torrential rain that triggered floods and landslides, more than 196,000 people have been forced out of their homes. The U.S. has lifted more economic sanctions on Myanmar to signal its support for ongoing political reforms after decades of military rule. West White House spokesperson Josh Ernest says revised sanctions against Myanmar are an incentive for the country to continue implementing political reforms. World power talks on ending the Syrian conflict broke down with a nuclear breakthrough today as new faction fighting erupted and death toll continued to mount. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry and his Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov said the Syria contact group they co-chair had agreed to bolster a shaky ceasefire. The U.S. Senate cleared the way to approval of $1.1 billion in immediate funds to battle the Zika virus. By a vote of 68 to 29, senators limited debate on the measure, paving the way for likely Senate approval this week. 
Two other funding approaches failed to get enough support to advance in the Senate. The White House threatened to veto a $622.1 billion Zika bill poised to pass the House of Representatives later this week, saying it was woefully inadequate. Time now for all the sporting action in Sportsbeat. The Supreme Court has refused to entertain a petition filed by the Cricket Association of Bihar, which attempted to stay the BCCI elections that are set to happen on the 22nd, stating that the case is already being heard by a regular bench. The petition also argued for the implementation of the Lodha Committee recommendations, under which any candidate charged cheated in a case cannot contest the BCCI elections. The recommendations, if followed, will prevent BCCI Secretary Anurag Thakur from contesting the elections. The Wrestling Federation of India has agreed to meet Sushil Kumar today, but his chances of attending the Rio Games look slim. Narsingh Yadav had won the Olympic quota and it seems unlikely that the Federation would support Sushil's demands for a trial, according to Bridge Bhushan, the president of the WFI. The decision to hold the meeting comes after the Delhi High Court had directed the WFI to meet Sushil. The wrestler had moved the court, demanding a trial to decide who represents India at the Rio Olympics. 31 athletes are facing bans from uh, the IOC after testing positive for banned substances during tests conducted on drug samples from the 2008 Beijing Games. This uh, number may increase as the results for the tests of the London Games samples are yet to be declared. IOC also plans to conduct tests on drug samples from the 2014 Sochi Winter Olympics after allegations of a state-sponsored doping program during the event. The IOC stores samples for up to 10 years which allow retesting with improved techniques. Leicester City arrived in Bangkok to a hero's welcome after the team defied all odds to win the Premier League for the first time in 132 years of its existence. The team was given a 5,000 to 1 chance to win the league by the bookies, making their climb to the top of the matter, uh, to the top of matter of pride for its high fans, with the many branding team as Thailand's team. The team is also a marketing opportunity for the owner, Sri Vardhana Prabha and King Power. Striker Jamie Vardy and midfielder Danny Drinkwater were unable to make the trip. Well, that's all from Ask Goodbye.